Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at another approach to large digit multiplication. We are in our home links, we're on uh, Unit 4, Lesson 6, Multiplying in Parts. Let's read the instructions. It says, in the example, a rectangle was drawn to represent the problem. Then, partial products multiplication was used to record the work in a simpler way. Use partial products multiplication to solve problems 1 and 2. So let's break down this example. Okay, so we know that 432 is really four hundreds plus three tens plus two ones. Because when I line up four hundred and thirty and two and I add them together, I get four hundred and thirty two. Okay, that's how 432, the number, exists. It's a combination of three things. So when I multiply to find out uh, the product of each part for each of the hundreds, tens, and ones, I just use my whole digit, single digit, number, sense, and I multiply things like 7 times 4 to get 28, ignoring for a moment that they have zeros, and then I just add those zeros in. So 7 times 4. 4 with two zeros gives me 28 with two zeros. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 3 with a 0 or 30 gives me 21 with a 0 or 21 tens, otherwise known as 210. And then, of course, 7 times 2 is 14. So once I have solved all those multiplication problems, the way I get my total or my product is I take the number... 2800 and I add it to 210 and then I add it to 14 and that gives me my total product which is 3024 now what's going on over here okay now partial products multiplication it takes the very same concept except it does not organize the information visually like the partitioned rectangles does. What it does instead is it relies on your understanding that 432 is made up of four hundreds, three tens, and two ones. And what it does is it takes each of those digits within the place values and it multiplies it by the other factor, which is seven. Okay? So right here we have the 2800. The 2800 is the product of 400 times 7. So 400 times 7 equals 2800. 210 is the product of 30 times 7. 30 times 7 is 210. And then of course 2 times 7 gives me 14. Okay? So I have my product for uh, 400 times 7. I have my product for 30 times 7. And then I have my product for 2 times 7. Okay? Now, if you notice, when I talk to you about 432 being 400 and 30 and 2, that's what I just did over here. 432 is 400 plus 3 tens plus 2 ones. So if I can separate those place values into their individual parts and then just multiply by my other factor, in this case it's a single digit number, 7, that allows me to break this problem down into smaller parts that I can then solve and then combine my answer. Okay? sounds a little confusing, but it's actually something we've been doing all along in our partitioned rectangles approach. So let me set up problem one for you. I'm not going to solve it for you, but I'm going to show you how to use the partial products approach. So 48 times 3. 48 is, of course, 4 tens and 8 ones. 48. If I add 40 plus 8 to itself, 
I get 48. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take 40 and I'm going to multiply that by 3. And then I'm going to take 8 and multiply that by 3. So I'm going to take then my product of 40 times 3. And I'm going to add that to my product of 8 times 3. And that will give me my total product, partial products. This here is a partial product, and this here would be a partial product. Okay? Same thing with this problem here, 653 times 8. 653 times 8 is 600. 50 and 3. So I would multiply each one of those numbers by the other factor of 8. 600 times 8, 50 times 8, and 3 times 8. And then when I do so, I would take each of those partial products and I would add them together over here. Now you'll notice the sets of boxes I'm setting up. You'll notice that uh, uh, I put a four box rectangle next to 600 times 8. That's because the product of 600 times 8 would be a four digit number. Okay. So I'm going to let you do the calculations. I don't want to do everything for you and take away all your fun. Okay. But that's how you approach this uh, partial products strategy. Again, if you're not quite sure how that works, you can uh, refer to uh, the video that I created for uh, our math journal lesson from today for Unit 4, Lesson 6. I go into more detail there. Okay? And then finally, uh, the practice down here is another uh, skill that is going to be crucial for when we are using the partial products method, which is write the numbers in expanded form. Well, expanded form is just taking what we did here with 48 and 653, just breaking it down into their uh, place value components. So let's look at 3 for a moment. 905,603. So 905,603 is made from 900,000 plus 5,000 plus 600 plus 3. That is the expanded form. Okay. Now if I line those up vertically, 900,000, 5,000, 600, and 3, and if I add all those digits together, like so, I get my original number of 905,603. That's the whole purpose of expanded form, so that you can see, as they say, the forest for the trees. Okay? There are five thousands in 905,603. Okay? Now you'll notice that I ignored two place values, and they are occupied by zeros here and here. Now I could have rewritten that problem like this, 900,000 plus no 10,000s plus 5,000 plus 600 plus no 10s plus 3 ones. Now that represents all six of the uh, place values represented in the number 905,603. But when I recognize that this has no value at all, I can just ignore it. Okay. So that's expanded form, which we are utilizing in our partial products multiplication. If you have questions about this or any other topic under the sun when it comes to multiplication, please talk to your math teacher. They would be happy to help you. Otherwise, uh, until we talk again, uh, good luck with your math. Thanks.